a huge part of self-sufficiency and self-reliance is growing as much food as you possibly can to fill your pantry and to cook with. And that's the reason I wanted a polytunnel. I live in northwest Cumbria on the coast. It's a challenging environment because we're exposed to all kinds of weather. I've got an 8x6 greenhouse but it was quite limited in the amount of stuff I could grow in there. I wanted a polytunnel so that I could shift an awful lot of what I was attempting and failing to grow outside to an undercover protected environment. The polytunnel was finished in I think it was around the 5th of June and I instantly cleared some ground, no dig style. I'd previously got no dig beds underneath where the polytunnel was sited, so it was quite an easy task to just establish no dig beds in the polytunnel. Let's have a look at what I've got growing in September. Tomatoes are such an easy crop to grow and they're fantastic for pudding up in the pantry. So much you can do with them, dehydrate, can, pickle. The polytunnel has enabled me to grow more tomatoes, which is fantastic. And I've harvested more tomatoes this year than any other season, which means more on the shelf. I'm keen to get as many tomatoes ripe as I possibly can and one way of speeding it along is to snip them off and hang them up on something. They're just hanging on my arch here and they ripen up quite quickly. I've got more tomatoes in bowls and just hanging out all over the place ripening up. But here you can see I've got a melon. Unfortunately I completely failed with my melon harvest this year. I did in the end get two melons. Unfortunately, the planters died off before bringing them to the end of their ripening. I don't think they're viable, but I am trying to dry them out off the vine. My aim is to find tomatoes that will grow in a short season, but also give me a really high yield. This season, Purple Ukraine has ticked that box, but I'm also really quite pleased with Amish Pace for the pure size of them. I mentioned in a previous video that I'd hand pollinated my butternut squash. Well, it worked. It might well be too late in the day to grow this on, but I'm pleased I finally got a butternut squash. And I've actually got a couple more. It's 38 degrees in here at the moment and they're wilting, but they'll be better when it cools off later tonight. But for September, we're getting really warmer temperatures than we did in July and August overnight. And I think that's what's encouraged growth here. I'm into planting. I've got chilies mixed in with kale and tomatoes and leeks. I use the calendula to make salve and behind the calendula is a peach tree. The cucumbers were a bit like the squash. They had a poor July and August, but I don't think they liked the cool temperatures. It was dipping down to about nine degrees. I've still got some kale to go in. And I've also tried putting in some beans, but they're not up yet. I've got peppers still ripening all over the place. I intend to keep growing in the polytunnel over winter. And here I've got salad crops, carrots, peas, I'll be interested to know how long the basil lasts through winter. And next to these, I've got my potatoes, which I'm attempting to grow for Christmas. I've enviously watched other people harvesting courgettes. It wasn't to be for me, but this, like the squash, seems to be enjoying the warmer nighttime temperatures and it's having a go. Maybe, just maybe, I'll get a few courgettes before the end of the season. I'm trying a few Brussels sprouts and there you can see some more peppers. The calendula are still looking beautiful. I'm really enjoying them. Kish Delight peppers are going red. And there I've got a check wax. I've harvested most of those now. These are the Oscar Dwarf peas I mentioned earlier and some older carrots. I've got celery, lettuce, spring onions, and here are my cayennes I overwintered that are absolutely loving it. 
These were harvested outside, violet cossa beans. I'm definitely going to shift and grow beans in the polytunnel next season. Like the butternut squash, this purple sprouting broccoli is looking very wilty, but it's those temperatures it'll pick up later on. It's been ravaged by butterflies, but has recovered. I think maybe due to spiders, that's just a theory. I've got a lot of spiders camped out, and since then, I haven't been getting any caterpillar damage. So tips for September. Get your polytunnel ready for winter. Not an awful lot of maintenance to do this year, but even so, I'll give it a good check. Remove old and unproductive plants such as courgettes. Take them out of my patty pans this week. If you didn't get around to sowing your winter crops in July and August, if you do it undercover in a polytunnel, there's still time. You can get all of those things sown in September. But if and you've got kale and broccoli growing outside, you can very carefully transplant them. So dig them up, mind the roots, and then transplant them in the polytunnel. So here we go. Broad beans, broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, coriander, cress, daikon, early carrots, fennel, kale, kohlrabi, lettuce, mizuna, oriental greens, peas, radish, rocket, spinach, spring cabbage, spring onions, strawberries, winter lettuce, winter leaves and winter turnips. So there you go. For those of my lovely subscribers who just tune in for the gardening, take care. We're going to go into the off-grid kitchen and do some preserving and have a look at my pantry. And I know some of you just aren't into that. So see you next time. If you are into preserving and you're interested in self-reliance and self-sufficiency, come on, we're going to take the tomatoes into my... I've come in to cool down and bring in the harvest, but also to check on a little project I've got going. So here's my lovely harvest of tomatoes. I'm just in the middle of doing some raw pack canning. So I've dipped them in boiling water, skinned them, and then what you do is you squash them down into a clean jar. Use your fingers, squash in as many as you can. You don't add any additional liquid. You're looking for half an inch of headspace. It is however necessary to add lemon juice. You need a tablespoon of lemon juice per jar and that's because all of the recipes were tested using lemon juice. Tomatoes are borderline in terms of acidity. They're very often grown for their sweetness and this lowers the acidity. I've cleaned off the top of the jars. Just deep bubble. You can see that the tomatoes have already made a considerable amount of juice and that will increase as they go through the canner. So I've popped my three jars into the Instant Pot Pro Plus. So this has a dedicated canning feature. It goes to 15 PSI. Canning. Pressure. You can either go low or max, that's max for the 15 PSI. Venting, you've got a number of choices. Natural for canning. And then you've got the time feature. Use the dial to set that. For raw pack tomatoes, with that tablespoon of lemon juice, there are numerous different options. But I'm going for 15 minutes at 15 PSI. Start. I'm building up a nice stock of tin tomato. I like to make all of my own stock. We've got some turkey stock there and some chicken stock. Small selection of canned meats. And then on this shelf, we've got all the condiments. So I've got my pickles, my chutneys, chilli sauce. We've got the jams and the marmalade. I've got strawberry jam, zesty lime marmalade, four fruits marmalade, lemon, apple and blackberry jam, and then my old English style marmalade. We've got a mini orchard. 
and the apple crop has been fabulous so far this year and I've managed to can up some apples for apple pie and also some apple sauce. My husband's allergic to eggs so I have to do egg free baking. Apple sauce is a fabulous alternative to eggs in a lot of cakes. I've canned up some of my plums and they're fabulous for a traditional plum steamed pudding. I love to have a few cans of orange segments and that's if I want to make a quick duck lounge. And here, these are from last year, I've still got quite a nice stock of apple and blackberry and those are fabulous for an apple and blackberry crumble. I haven't been too busy with the dehydrator I've got some nettle powder that I created in spring. I've got bits of lemon dried here. Those are great for grinding into a powder and using as flavouring. I've got some oregano from the garden. Frozen vegetables I use in soups. Some red onion, chilies, and orange, similar to the skins of the lemons. I grind them into powder for some flavouring. And over at the back there we've got some leek tops. Gardens. Huge thank you to all the people that take the time to watch my videos. It really helps if you could give me a thumbs up and maybe leave a comment. Till next time, take care.